So good, good afternoon. I, I'm not an AI expert, so but Professor Kim Chang asked me to give a presentation. So next slide, please. Next one. Uh, okay, skip this one. <clears throat> okay, a brief history of AI in China. It's quite interesting because in the old days, the AI is something against communism. So actually, at the beginning, the Chinese <coughs> really against the AI ideas follow the Soviet Union. Then later, China fight with Soviet Union, but still, AI is not a good thing to do in mainland China. And uh, OK, until 1978, which is after Cultural Revolution, AI research is permitted. So there are op optical character recognition and fuzzy logics. And uh, in 1981, China Association of Artificial Intelligence was, was formally founded. And uh, in, OK, so then it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. I like to cite there are several projects related to artificial intelligence. For example, in 1986, the 863 project included AI. Next slide, please. And uh, in 1987, the book AI and Applications was, was published. That's the first AI book in mainly China. And uh, in 1993, AI is listed in National Science and Technology Climbing Program. And also in, in the year 2000, that's 973 project. And uh, OK, recently in 2014, AI is listed in per President Xi Jinping's report. So it's got very positive. And uh, we are and also in the project of Made in China 2025. That's one of the things caused the debate between China and the United States. That's the project Trump cited and got very mad. So that's the project. OK, and, uh, <clears throat> and in 20, 2016, the planning for the development of robot industry. That's a white paper by the government, also artificial intelligence, internet plus project. So that's also the Chinese government funded project. And in 2015, the white paper on artificial intelligence is published. So that's the white paper on intelligent robot, understanding of natural language, pattern recognition, intelligent driving and machine learning. Next slide, please. And the uh, academic research after the Cultural Revolution, those are the fields. China is relatively good. So they are the geometric theorem probing by computer and the knowledge base automatic depending and the high level control, speech recognition, iris recognition, fingerprint identification. In summary, there are about 70 artificial intelligence books published in China since 1987. And uh, the interesting thing is the government policy, which actually cited earlier today, a new generation of artificial intelligence development plan. It's issued in July 8th, 2017. So there are several things in that document. First, the principles, the, the Chinese way, or the Chinese government like to list like a policy or those kind of things. The first is, it is based on the science and technology. So that's the foundation for, for AI. And the second, it is also quite interesting, the Chinese government really believe the top-down design. So that's the approach opposite to like United States and other countries. So, and uh, however it's cited and referred to as a park market driven thing. So it's also rely on the market and uh, the good thing is open source. 
as cited open source precisely in that document. And the goals, that's, well, so the year 2020, China like to think, synchronize with other countries, especially for the United States. And in the 2025, China, Chinese government wants some kind of breakthroughs in AI. And uh, in the year 2030, China, Chinese government want the leadership in AI. So that's, that's the goals set by the government. We are next one, the tasks. So there, there will be three things cited in that document. The first one is AI, innovation system. So it's based on, okay, let's refer to the theoretical breakthroughs, the technology development, and the build up the platforms and the human resources, and also AI ecosystems, the AI industry, AI upgrade for traditional industry, intelligence enterprise, and the AI innovation highlands, and the intelligent society, including intelligent service, intelligent government, governance, improving the capacity of public safety by AI, and promote social communication and share mutual trust via AI. Okay, next. <clears throat> so, also they try to combine the civilian and the military. That's something in the document. So, next one, because of the time. And the AI education, each Ministry under the Chinese government also issued AI-related documents. So this one is issued by the Ministry of Education. Next one. And uh, in the universities in China, they are set up institutes of AI. So there are about 17 universities open AI-related courses. So the graduate students per year, it's about 10,000 undergrads and the 10, 1,000 master and 1,000 PhD. Next one. Even the Chinese government introduced AI education in high school, that's the areas. Next one. And the industry, so there are some things. I like to emphasize they are AI chips made by Huawei and Baidu. Next one. So the, you know, the BAT, so Baidu is highlighted in self-driving bus and Alibaba AI-based real-time video analysis and the Tencent is the medical systems. Next one. So AI is really a hot topic. There will be many applications, good or bad and uh, the AI governance has not been identified. In that document, no policy, no laws refer to AI. So that's my presentation. Thank you very much. Now I would like to request Dr. Govind for his presentation. Thank you. Uh, after the listening to China and the global scenario in the AI, I would be presenting the what where we are in the India. So in India, the AI is emerging as a single largest technological revolution with the potential to disrupt almost all aspects of human activities. India is a big country with a 1.2 billion population. So we believe that AI is a will be a game changer in a large population like India to have a different kind of technological applications. Angie NG, co-founder of Coursera and formerly head of Baidu AI Group, compares the transformational impact of AI to the, that of electricity 100 years back. So you can see the potential of the AI, which is just be like what the electricity did 100 years back, with many industries aggressively investing in cognitive and AI solutions, global investments are going to be reaching US dollar 56, 57.6 billion in 2021. So you can see the what kind of developments are going to take place in this important area. Here is a short evolution of AI from 1940 to 2018. 
I will not go much into that. This is all available in the website. Only thing is, this is starting from the Alan Turing's earliest development in the computers, and then going to the middle stages of the modern age, what way the AI develop, system has been developed, and how the Google's auto kind of thing is developing AI generates AI kind of thing, innovation of virtual agents. So these are the latest developments compared to the earlier development taken place few decades back that AI is taking a big shape. Coming to India, India vision on AI, India being the fastest growing economy with the second largest population in the world has a significant stake in the AI revolution. Recognizing AI's potential to transform economies and the need for India to strategize its approach, the NITI IO, this is one of the highest policy planning body of the country, has established the national program on AI, which is uh, just a few months back. India, given its strengths and characteristics, has the potential to position itself among leaders on the global AI map with a unique brand of AI for all. We believe that the kind of diversity we have got in the country, kind of applications which we can generate, will really see that the globally we can work on this emerging area. So here is the emerging AI technologies which we are looking into. The AI technologies in the computer vision, audio processing, virtual agents, identify anal analytics, national language processing which Killam just talked about, cognitive robotics, knowledge representation, speech analysis, machine learning, recommendation systems, expert systems, data visualization. So these are the few of the illustrative examples and the technologies which we are looking into the AI based systems in the country. National AI strategy adapted to India's unique needs and aspirations while at the same time is capable of achieving the country's full potential of leveraging AI developments. Following are the three distinct interrelated components. Opportunity, the economic impact of AI for India, AI for greater good, social development and inclusive growth. We are confining more on the social development aspects of AI than the other developments. AI garage for 40% of the world, solution provider for the choice for the emerging and developing economies like excluding China across the globe. So here if you look at the economic impact, AI has the potential to add 1 trillion to India's economy in 2035. So how we are going into the present baseline of 6397 billion to 6397 base and then 9657 billion through the AI systems, intelligent automation, augmentation and total factor productivity in the various industries. So uh, these are some of the uh, focus areas like agriculture, healthcare, education, smart cities and smart mobility and these are the key challenges, lack of enabling data ecosystems, low intensity AI research. And, and this is a kind of specific initiatives which we are going to initiate in the system. And these are the conclusions. Play a strategic mission to design the system, dem democratization of development and use, and creation of network alliances among academia, service industry, and thank you. Good evening all. <clears throat> After global scenario and uh, presentation of two big giants, neighboring giants, Nepal is in between of China and India. Uh, I'm going to present a few uh, examples uh, that uh, uh, AI and uh, some innovative uh, practice is in, in Nepal. Next. 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 <clears throat> Next. Next, next, yeah. 
Uh, I, I was skipping those content that I've already discussed, so so I can concentrate on AI initiatives in Nepal. There are a few enthusiasts that uh, they engage themselves on AI issues. We don't have so far any AI-related policies, AI-related projects by the governments. Rather, uh, some enthusiasts, uh, technical people, the students, they uh, come together and and. They engaged in developing certain AI-related activities. Uh, for example, we have uh, AI Saturday, uh, and we have uh, one uh, initiative of AI Nepal, uh, AI for development, and we have some engagement of Fuse Machine Fellowships. Next. <coughs> AI Saturday is a global movement, uh, but uh, uh, some uh, young uh, technical uh, students they come up with uh, these uh, initiatives and, and they started uh, having uh, discussion on AI on especially Saturdays. So uh, it is called AI Saturdays and they, uh, they try to uh, uh, engage more young people basically from uh, colleges and universities uh, in this kind of uh, discussions. Next. <coughs> Next. Uh, Fuse Machine also, uh, it's an international uh, uh, company and they have provided certain fellowships uh, for Nepalese uh, uh, tech students. So they engaged on certain uh, AI related activities and products. Next. There's one interesting development uh, that uh, we have on AI Nepal. Uh, it's, uh, it's an NGO. Uh, who is uh, uh, working in the area of uh, promoting AI, uh, encouraging young people uh, to engage in AI and uh, uh, promoting uh, this uh, through their engagement. Next. And uh, after this, uh, not only in Nepal, Nepalese uh, technical uh, students, they also emerge at global level. One of example is in, in Washington State University, uh, one of uh, Manoj Karki, uh, one uh, technical person, he is engaged in uh, AI related researches. Basically, uh, his research are uh, focused on AI and agriculture, like uh, harvesting and, and irrigation and all these things. Uh, he is engaged and, and leading that activity in this university. And there are some um, examples of engagement of AI in Nepal. So far, uh, so far we don't have, as, as I said, we don't have specific policies and, and pro uh, budget uh, bu uh, and projects in government budgets. But uh, universities uh, and colleges, they are uh, uh, engaging uh, students in, in AI-related activities. Now uh, I conclude uh, my presentation. Oh, you can uh, uh, click all those uh, links uh, uh, and, and uh, get more activities of those uh, uh, initiatives. Thank you. Now I would like to uh, open the floor and I would like to request uh, uh, Professor Singlit uh, to come uh, at front. Also, I'd like to request Dr. Govind to come at front, front so uh, we can respond uh, the queries from the floor. Hi. Okay. Um, I have two questions, one for Shingli and one for Govind. Um, so could you maybe talk a little bit about how the planning around AI um, started trickling down into provinces? I think that there's a lot of uh, interest in that kind of model that we're seeing where you kind of have the centralized government planning and the different provinces implementing it differently. And I was wondering if you could provide some context on that. As I mentioned, it's top down. So actually each province, provincial government also announced their AI strategies. So that's the way it's move forward. and. Uh, I, well, basically, that's the same. Okay, 
Thanks. Um, Gavin, I've been reading reports about India looking at the China Development Plan and kind of thinking of emulating the same structure to create a national strategy for India. And I was wondering if you were aware of this development and kind of if you have thoughts about whether this would be uh, a better model for India and to what extent um, are regulators really going to localize the policy and make sure that it fits India and is not just a kind of a carbon copy? Yeah, that's a good question. And uh, we in India, that is why we are looking into the more socio-economic perspective in the country. Mm -hmm. And we are not, uh, we are concentrating more mainly on agriculture, transport, education, health, four or five such factors, which is, which is affecting the larger mass of the, not in the urban, but the rural areas. So there where we are, uh, our AI strategies are going to be strategized in a way that will help the more masses in the country and concentrating on these five uh, areas, specific areas. Okay, cool. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, do you think the process of uh, designing governance ecosystem for AI is complex? Yeah. No, it depends. You are asking. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it depends on the what kind of applications you are looking from the AI point of view. Like in two, three applications which I can quote in India, one is the you know the early dropouts in the schools because of the social the economic reasons or the not attending the classes. So there, in one of the provinces of the country, they are applying this AI in such a way that they can early analyze the data through AI why the uh, student is not joining the classes, not coming the classes. So that application is going to work in that fashion. And secondly, in the cancer uh, detection, they have found that uh, through AI, they can diagnose much faster way with the few examples of the AI detection techniques they have developed in the country. So. Thank you. Uh, me, Romkan Pandey from Nepal. My question, first, uh, Govind, Dr. Govinda. Uh, in the Indian perspective, uh, to convert translation of the language in the Devanagari uh, script, uh, they are working in the NLP, Natural Language Processing Parts. Uh, what type of problem is uh, in the India to use this NLP to translate the Devanagari Hindi language to English language, English to uh, Hindi language? So what kind of uh, yeah, issues what, are, what, kind of, what type of challenges you face? Yeah, uh, we are facing a couple of challenges in the sense that from English to Hindi or English, Hindi to English? Hindi, Hindi to English. Hindi to English. That from Hindi to English, we are facing that the keyboards, the how to convert the keyboards more user friendly keyboards in the country, in the mobile and this kind of thing. Then the, dias then the, uh, the language diaspora the kind of contents which we are developed in English, that many contents are not there in Hindi. So we have to see that how that like medical uh, vocabulary or the literature vocabulary, science and technology vocabulary, how these can be translated into the various English terms and the, la and the main content is not in the, in the real translation part of the English. Mm -hmm. So there we need a kind of more help from the uh, uh, what about the accuracy rate uh, nowadays? Yeah, accuracy de depends. Uh, the one of the organization like CTEC has developed up to seventy percent of accuracy in the country. Uh, there we are looking for other organization to test these examples in the various languages, particularly Hindi, and where in certain part like transcript and all this is reaching ninety ninety five percent, but in certain spoken languages, speech recognition kind of thing, it is not reaching to that level. Okay, thank you. Okay, let me give you some <clears throat> uh, comment on uh, Japan and uh, probably in uh, South Korea. Just attend a <clears throat> conference uh, at, uh, in Seoul about a, couple, uh, about a week or two weeks ago. And uh, this uh, Professor Arisa Emma, 
made uh, a presentation. And uh, you can see this PowerPoint file in uh, uh, AI that you go through the APSIG AI <laughs> uh, uh, reference. And uh, she talk fairly does extensively on uh, how Japan is doing on uh, AI ethics and uh, policies. And uh, it's a very, very elaborate those uh, effort. And uh, if you are interested, you may take a, a look at it. Uh, this is uh, about 40 pages PowerPoint. I just pick up from the, uh, uh, the program, AI slash AI, uh, and the reference. <coughs> then another thing is in Japan, they had a uh, AI and the society uh, symposium uh, about a year ago. Yeah. About a year and a half ago. No. no, no it was October 2017. 2017. Yeah. So about. Yeah. Uh, about uh, yeah. Two October 2017. We, we attend a couple of more people attended. Uh, it was a very uh, pretty good. Uh, at least a very good effort uh, by Japanese. So the, I feel so much better because the similar effort are all, always done either in the USA, like a beneficial AI, which is a beautiful those are, uh, conference, or in the uh, UK, typically at the Cambridge uh, University. Uh, nothing in uh, uh, Asia. And this is the first one which was so good. Problem or challenge we have is that when they have a beneficial AI conference in the USA, nobody from Asia participated as a speaker. And uh, then the second, AI and the society, almost no speaker from the rest of Asia. So that's the sort of a starting point. Okay, so the uh, very likely, a uh, year from today, uh, next fall, year and a half from today, uh, they are going to have a second AI and the society. And the hope, we want to see the, uh, some participant from the rest of Asia, and uh, hopefully uh, some of them as a speakers. Then uh, hope we can duplicate or something competitive out of China, India, and the rest of those Asia. But uh, today, it seems to be everything is uh, very much those one-sided, so concentrated in the USA and the UK. And uh, Japan is having a hard time to catch up, even though they're doing uh, those, a very good job. But still, it's a uh, uh, way off. And the rest of Asia, uh, I just don't see any. That's the starting point, so we have to work hard. And in the case of South Korea, you may, if you know, you may update. Uh, uh, we are doing as a AI as a part of a fourth industrial revolution project, not as an AI project. So the, you don't see the, any AI uh, white paper from uh, South Korea. And uh, then, uh, yeah, and uh, if you ask me, then uh, do, don't we have any AI uh, researcher in Korea? For example, I'm from KAIST, okay? At the KAIST, uh, probably we have uh, 1,000 professors, uh, about 10%, 100 of them are working on AI. So do we have a uh, uh, not a small number. But somehow, then the Seoul National University is pretty much same as, same as uh, KAIST. So the, we have uh, many professors, but somehow in this area, we, we are not really uh, consolidating. So the program is not coherent, and uh, so we have to watch out. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope uh, we can do uh, uh, better in the coming years. And uh, again, I guess we should have a more dialogue 
uh, among us. And uh, even uh, like, a, like a Professor Emma's uh, was a very good uh, uh, presentation, and uh, I asked her to come over here to give uh, uh, AI and ethics uh, next year. And, uh, but uh, we don't really have uh, much communication. Like, for example, we have about 20 countries here, right? Did any of those uh, a professor M or somebody visit your company, country to give a talk? Probably none. We just don't have a good those, uh, communication among us compared to the between the uh, USA, Canada, UK. They have a very good communication all the time. So the, that's something uh, like a challenge. Uh, you have, if you have any comment on those, uh, please do. Yeah, I think what uh, what we are looking in India is a kind of more diverse applications of this AI-based technology, uh, which is really impinging the, impacting the larger mass of the country, rather than giving in some narrower kind of application. So that's what I said, that it is more impacting the health, agriculture, education, transportation, and these areas. And there I believe that whole of the Asian our examples can be there for other parts of the Asia also, because they are all equally suffering or uh, facing those kind of problems in the in the country. So, uh, so uh, some of the unique examples of the AI applications can be beneficial to others also. That's what I feel in this AI technology. Anybody wants to? Uh, hello, I have a question for Mr. Shi Ling. Yeah, uh, you mentioned in your um, presentation about the three giants in uh, China, technical giants, Tencent, Alibaba, and the uh, Baidu. And uh, we all know that they are, um, traditionally, they are specialized in one area. For example, Alibaba is in, specialized in online, online shopping and everything. And do you think, in terms of AI, do you think they're going to collaborate, or do you think they're going to compete with each other, or do you think they're going to speci specialize in some part of AI? OK, thank you for the question. My understanding is uh, actually they have their own approaches. Mm -hmm. So basically, they are not really competing in AI. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they will specialize in different yeah, part of right, AI. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I may offer uh, one insight about that, just because I'm sorry, I lived in China for two years and I did a lot of research. Um, I think that they each have a mandate from the government. Tencent has health, Alibaba has um, uh, autonomous vehicles and kind of mobility and... Uh, Can you come to the mic? Yeah, sorry. I'm really sorry. Um, I just think it's a really great question and, and I think that uh, Xingli obviously knows this, we were talking about this in lunch and I want to kind of uh, contribute. So each company has a mandate from the government uh, under the development plan. Uh, Tencent does health, Alibaba does mobility and autonomous vehicles, and I'm sorry, T Baidu does autonomous vehicles and mobility and Alibaba does smart infrastructure. Um, they do have their own specialization, uh, but they also compete by investing in companies that do similar functions. It's actually a very, very complicated uh, kind of system. And I think that Xingli obviously answered this very well, but I just wanted to give some context. So in that sense, I agree with him that we're going to see the kind of specialization and, and diversion because uh, I think that the government kind of mandated that to be the case. But it is more complicated than it seems. Sorry. This is Iqbal from Bangladesh. Thank you very much for that nice discussion on AI. Uh, some of uh, you talked about AI Saturday education. It's, it's been happening in Singapore and Nepal, someone said. 
So why don't we get it in my country? I think uh, if you can uh, shed some light on this, uh, some extra information, how it works and uh, how can we get it in my country or introduce it in my locality? Uh, it's it's uh, open. Uh, this happening in uh, various uh, countries and cities. Uh, I have given some links over there. If you can check those links and then you can uh, have access to them. One more thing to know, is it formal education? The no, people no, no. who will uh, complete it, will, will he or she get a certificate or kind of uh, supporting type tutorials? It, it is uh, open discussion that promotes, that uh, orients about the AI and engagement. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Any more questions? Oh, okay, in, in China, like I mentioned, the government really promoting, that's one thing. Second, actually, I believe the AI is mainly, the human resource is very important. For example, if you have human resource, like students, then there are lots of open source tools on the internet. You can download and try, like, uh, for example, we just finished the previous graduate Session. There are a lot of senior design projects related to AI, whatever the network management, character recognition, whatever things. There are lots of these kind of AI related projects based on open source. So that's, and some students start, I mean, form the startups if they see that, and there are some kind of venture capitals to fund. So that's the the company and in China because the government really try to support this kind of AI related stuff so they are kind of see move really fast in China. Thank you. I may add that in India also there is a I think the a big number of startups which are coming up in various areas of IT and AI is also becoming a emerging area in among these startups to take up these activities and a lot of fundings are coming up in AI based systems to develop in a variety of applications in the country. Any more questions and comments? So uh, Dinner time. <laughs> uh, tomorrow, uh, yeah, first of all, let's uh, give a hand to the warm hand to the. Uh,